Okay, it's time to start. This is Math 1151. We're gonna. This is 3.10, Part Two. Uh, I asked for some questions. I got one on your homework, I guess. The first question is: uh, You have an expanding square. How the ex how the square is expanding? Nobody knows. Okay, but the square is expanding, and uh, it's expanding. The sides are all uh, getting longer at a rate of, uh, was it, two meters per second. Is that right, two meters per second? It's the length, it's the length of the side is getting longer at two meters per second. Yeah, yeah, so, so the length and the width are both expanding. Because it's a square. She says, why does it, if both the length and the width are expanding, why does it just say length? It's because it's a square. All right. She says, I think I know how to do the problem now, right? Let's see if we get the answer that you expect. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go along. Oh, right. So uh, we're doing, we're solving related rates problems, right? And uh, the step one, step one was, uh, was uh, draw a picture, right? Draw a picture. Step one was uh, draw a picture. And then, let's see, what was step two? Find an equation. Find an equation. That says equation up there. Differentiate. Equation. And then uh, evaluate at known values. All right, so we're solving a related rates problem. And here, uh, we have the expanding square. A classic in the catalog of related rates problems. So we have the sides are expanding at two meters per second. And we want to know how, how is the area, what's the, uh, we want to know the rate, the area is changing when the sides are 10 meters long. That's what we want to know. Make sense? So we've drawn our picture. I should have put it under the orange drawing the picture, but I didn't because well, I just didn't. Okay, so now we've got to find an equation. All right, so finding the equation. How do you, what's the area of a square? Base times height, and the base is the same as the height. So um, let's do uh, height times height equals area. So now we take the derivative, we differentiate the equation, and to, this is, by the way, this is h squared equals area. There we go. h squared equals area. So now we're going to differentiate, equation, differentiate the equation. And remember, and this is something we haven't talked about much, and so I'm going to start talking about today a lot. When you're, talk, when you're doing calculus, you're checking how much something changes with respect to something else. What's the something else? Here we're looking at area. Here we're looking at side length. What's the other thing that's changing? It's the thing that's always changing around us. It's time. And so we're thinking of these things as functions of time. Think of both H and A as functions of time. And so now we take the derivative with respect to time. When we say with respect to, that means the, th the other th the thing that's changing. And what we're going to get is 2 h of t times, by the chain rule, h prime of t 
is equal to a prime of t. Right? Good? Okay. Now we evaluate at known values. We know what almost everything is here. Because uh, I know h prime of t, h prime of t, that's the rate that the side of the square is changing, is equal to 2 meters per second. h of t is given to us in the question. It says when the sides are 10 meters long. So h of t is equal to 10 meters. That leaves, the, o the only thing that's left is a prime of t, and that's what we want to know. We want to know the rate the area is changing. And so I can just plug this in, so I'm going to get 2 times 2 times uh, 10 is equal to um, 40, right? And then it's going to be 40 uh, meters squared per second, isn't it? 40 meters squared per second. What questions do you have about this? What question in the book was this? Can you tell us? What, this is number five from the textbook. It's also on your homework, is that right? Do they change? Is that right? I don't know. Oh, she has started the textbook problem. Excellent idea. Is it good? Yeah. Excellent. So last year, uh, not last year, oh my god, um, last Friday, after, <laughs> it feels like last year, uh, last Friday after class, uh, somebody came up and requested that I do a certain problem. So I'm going to try to do uh, a problem here. So yes, I take requests. Here we go. This one is also another classic. Oh, there's no. We should all, we should sit down for like a week and try to think of new related rates problems. This is a lighthouse problem. The lighthouse problem. Okay, so uh, let's see. We have a lighthouse. A lighthouse. is three kilometers uh, from the nearest point on shore. The lighthouse is out in the middle of the ocean. It's like on an island or something. It's light revolves at 4 RPM. What's RPM stand for? Revolutions per minute. 4 revolutions per minute. How fast is the light moving along the shore one kilometer from P. Now let's draw a picture and see if we can make this make more sense. So it's a very straight beach. This is shore. And here's the water. And then this is the, here's the lighthouse. And we're rotating at 4 RPM. There we go. Oh, and we have a point P, green. There's P. And if you imagine this, you could imagine, see the light's going to come across the shore and going to, Go like this, right? That's what's going to happen. And so we're going to have a distance here. This is 
This is, we want to know how fast it's going. So, you know, I labeled this, here's what I like to do. I like to have like an arrow and then like an X there. And that, that's like the, the, the arrow means like there's a rate going on or something like this. And, and then this actual distance here, don't use blue, Bart. Uh, this actual distance here is one kilometer. So I think I really have almost all the, uh, the information from the problem kind of in that picture. I don't have that, yeah, so this, <laughs> these people are telling me that I forgot one of the most critical parts, which is the distance from the shore, which is, uh, there we go, three kilometers. There we go. So now, now my picture, now it's good. What questions do you have about the statement of the question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's point P. Point P. You're absolutely right. Was it, do you want me to, I'll say more. If, if. Okay, okay, so here's the question. So we have, we're going to have a light and it's going to go like this. That's what's going to happen. All right, so we've got to find an equation now. Well, haha. If I draw a line like this, what sort of, what, what sort of shape do I have here? I have a right triangle. Hurrah. Okay, so right triangle. Here's my, ooh, here's my right angle. And uh, revolutions per minute, that's kind of angular, so we should maybe label this with a theta here. Label this with a theta. So now we're going to find an equation. This problem might seem really hard, but uh, I don't think, I think it's not too bad. What's tangent of theta equal to? Opposite over adjacent. And look, here's opposite will be x. x is our distance. Maybe I should put x prime for the, for the arrow. x prime's the rate. And I know that it equals 1, but it's changing. And so you've got to say tan theta is equal to opposite x over 3. Tan theta is equal to x over 3. And what's, what's changing in the background all the time, behind our theta and behind our position? What's changing, really? Time. We're going to differentiate with respect to time. I keep on saying that because that's the correct terminology to use. And it's, par it's probably kind of new to you, you know. With respect, we take the derivative with respect to x. It means x is changing, right? With respect to theta means theta is changing. With respect to time, theta and x both change with respect to time. Okay, so uh, there's our equation. Pretty simple. Let's differentiate the equation. I think I like this, this other chalk better because I think it's easier to read, actually. If you disagree, send me an email and I'll change. All right, so uh, differentiate. What's the derivative of tangent of theta? Secant squared theta with the chain rule, so we have to multiply by theta prime of t. I'll put some t's in here. Theta of t, there we go, times theta prime of t, there we go, is equal to the derivative of x with respect to t is just going to be uh, x prime of t over 3. Constant multiple rule. Now, what do we want to know? If we look at our problem again, which of these things do we want to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need, but what do we want to know at the end of the day? We want to know x prime. At the, in, at the end of the day. At the very end of the day, we want to know x prime. So now, can you tell me the rate? Can you tell me theta prime of t? If it goes around 
four revolutions per minute. What'd you say? What'd you say? Oh, I thought he whispered something. Four rotations per minute. Four rotations per minute. So one rotation is how many radians? Two pi. So four is going to be, yeah, four rotations per minute. Four rotations per minute is equal to eight pi radians. Radians. Radians per minute. 8 pi, because you go around. Is that right? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. 4 rotation. 8 pi. 4 equals 4 times 2 pi. There we go. Per minute. Ah, so that tells us that theta prime, so let's see, evaluate at known values. Let's do this. We can do this. Here we go. I know theta prime of t is equal to 8 pi radians per minute. What's secant, squ secant squared of theta? Now look, we can pull this right from our triangle, actually, because secant is uh, 1 over cosine, right? And cosine is opposite, I mean adjacent over hypo Oh, what's the hypotenuse here? Hypotenuse is, it's going to be 1 squared plus 3 squared. That's the square root of 10, isn't it? Square root of 10. Aha! So cosine's 3 over the square root of 10. So secant is the square root of 10. So look, secant of theta of t is equal to 1 over cosine theta of t is equal to um, mm, square root of 10 over 3. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, he says I forgot the square. I, I, I was actually just restraining myself and holding back, honestly, honestly, this time. Okay, so secant squared of theta of t is equal to, now we square both of these, right? And we get, so the good, good. So 10 over 9. Secant squared of theta of t is 10 over 9. Aha! Wait a second. We know theta prime. We know theta of t. We should be able to solve for uh, x prime of t. Let's do it. So um, this is going to be 10. So wait, secant squared of theta of t times theta prime of t is equal to x prime of t over 3. That's going to be 10 over 9. That's this one. Times 8 pi radians per minute is equal to x prime of t over 3. Uh-huh. So uh, multiply both sides by 3, and I get 80 pi over 3 is equal to x prime of t. What do you guys think? What's the units on this, by the way? Uh, this is going to be kilometers per minute. Kilometers per minute. He says, if you want an action, that is a good, that is a whole number. That is not, it's not a whole number. That is a real number, 80, 80 pi over 3. Yeah, but if, this would be going at 80 pi over 3 this way. Was this okay? Yes, back there. Yeah, okay, so let's think about this for a second. 
Uh, cosine is cosine is three over radical ten. I mean, yeah. So what I think is confusing here is you're probably really tempted to start off and not have x here. You'd have one, right? But then nothing's changing. You got to keep. You got to remember that this distance here is changing. And when they say uh, how fast or how much is something changing when this equals, you plug that in later, right? Are we ready to do another example? What do you guys think about these problems? Some are more tricky. How do you get good at doing, how do you get good at these sorts of problems? You practice them. You have to sit around doing them. It's not going to help. It will help a little bit to watch me. It will, because you'll get some idea of how to do it. But really, it's not going to help that much. And to be honest with you, I don't think, I don't know, but I don't think we're going to try to trick you with the most tricky ones here. We're going to try to trick you with the easy ones. What's an example? Actually, these aren't so bad, to be honest with you. These are, these are pretty... What do you need to know to do these problems? Pythagorean theorem. You got to know the Pythagorean theorem. That's really all you... You have to know the Pythagorean theorem. And look, you got to know the sort of like triangle thing that, we did, that we've been doing throughout the class, right? If you can do those two things, then you can probably solve this problem. problem. But for kicks, let's go ahead and work a harder one. Let's do a, a more challenging one. Here we go. Was that okay? Okay. Here we go. Let's see if I can... This is also a classic... This is a classic related rates, related rates problem. problem. Hmm. Very classic problem. So water is poured into a conical container. At a rate of 10 centimeters cubed per second. So I'm going to start drawing this right away so we understand what the question's asking. So we have a cone. Well, we have a cone, and it looks like there's my cone, and water is being poured in. at a rate of, and I'll do this, I'll write this, dv over dt. This is good stuff to think about. That looks fancy and everything, but that just means the rate that the volume is changing as time changes. It's the, this, is the, this is the right way to do it. dv dt is equal to 10. The cone, oops, the cone currently has a water level uh, wait, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got this all screwed up. It's fine until that sentence right there. Let's see, the height is 30 centimeters. And the radius is 10 centimeters. OK, so this is 30 centimeters. This is 10 centimeters. How 
how fast is the water level rising? How fast is the water level rising when the water is four centimeters deep? So we have some, here's the water, right? It's four centimeters deep. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys something. I'm going to tell you something that, you know, I don't think, here's, here's a hint volume of a cone is 4 pi r cubed all over 3. No, a sphere is something else, isn't it? It is a sphere. <laughs> a volume of a cone is, that's what I did last time, pi over 3. There we go. R squared H. Sorry about that. Thank you. We would have solved some other prob problem that's probably impossible to cook up. So there's our volume. So find an equation. Not even thinking about it, what's the equation that we're going to try to use? We're going to try to use this volume equation here. So volume is equal to pi over 3 r squared h. And you might think, well, how hard can this problem be then? Well, let's differentiate the equation and find out. Differentiating, differentiating the equation, I get dv dt. And I know what that is, right? It's 10. It's equal to pi over 3 times 2r. Oh, geez, what's going to have to happen here? times r prime of t times h of t plus pi over 3 times r squared of t times h prime of t. What just happened there? The product rule. The product rule made this a lot harder because everything's changing. So if we try to evaluate this, let's see, we can kind of simplify this down a little bit. This is uh, pi over 3. So 10 dv dt, I know that, is pi over 3 times, do I know, uh, well I know r of t here, r of t, I should put it on my picture, r of t is right there, that's the radius. I know that. Um, what's the, yeah, I don't know. OK, so uh, let's see. So that's going to be 2 times r of t times r prime of t times h of t, oh my goodness, plus r of t squared times h prime of t. Do I know? I know h of t, don't I? What's h of t? It's 4. h of t, this is, this is the height here. This is the height, so this is equal to h of t. And what do I want to find? 
times 4, I'll just erase it. And sorry, I hope it's OK. What do I want to find here? I want to find h prime, right? What's the problem? Why don't I just, what's, what's, what's stopping me? I don't know what R is, right? I don't know what R is. Here's where we have to go back to like seventh grade or something like this, or sixth grade, and we have to think about similar triangles. We have similar triangles here. If I know this is 30 and this is 10, I know, it's not, yeah, 10, that, that 10 right there. 10 over 30 is equal to, what's the height here? It's 4. And what's this going to be? That's r, right? 4 over r. Right? OK, so now, let's see, what's, what's r going to be? r is 40 over 30, which is equal to 4 thirds is equal to r. So that's r of t. So I can go back here, and I can, uh, yeah, you might want to wait to write this one down. This is going to be 2 times 4 thirds right here, and it's going to be 4 thirds squared. 4 thirds squared. What am I still missing? I'm missing r prime of t. But by the way, look at this. Look at this. There's another equation here. I don't have much room to write it, but I'm going to write it anyways. 10 over 30 is equal to r over h, always. And so r is equal to 10 h over 3 is equal to r. Differentiate both sides. And I'm going to get h prime of t over 3 is going to equal r prime of t. Aha, so now I can write in, I can remove this r prime and say this is equal to h prime of t all over 3. I've evaluated unknown values. Now, what's the final step of this problem? problem? I got to solve for h prime. It's not fun, right? Solve for h prime. Tell you what, I'm not going to do this for you. Instead, I'm just going to tell you the tell you the final answer. Are you ready? And then you can solve for it at home if you feel like it. I don't think anybody wants to watch me do this. What? You want to see me do this? All right, let's do it. Solve for h prime. Yeah, watch this. So now we're going to have 30 over pi is equal to uh, h prime of t times uh, 2 4 thirds. Let's make that 4 ninths. Uh, whoa, 16. Whoa, 32. Now, uh, Bart, you're being a jerk. OK, so now, I'm sorry. OK, let's just do this for real. So now, first multiply everything by pi over 3. And so I'll get, by, by, sorry, 3 over pi. So I'll get 30 over pi is equal to this thing. 2 times 4 thirds 
times h prime of t all over 3 times 4 plus 4 over 3 squared times h prime of t. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify. I'm going to simplify the inside. Now look, by the way, I just have, I could factor out, we can factor out h prime of t immediately. And we're, we're, we're basically almost done. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, that's going to be 30 over pi. And I'm going to factor out an h prime of t because there's one in each, oh sorry, equals, equals, equals h prime of t times, and now I'm going to start combining these things. So this is a, so I have a 4 here, right? 4 times 4 is 16 times 2 is 32. So that's 32 all over, and then this is 3 times 3, which is 9, plus, now this is uh, 4 squared, 16 over 9, well, plus 16 over 9. Uh, 32 plus 16 is, uh, thank you, okay, so this is equal to h prime of t times 48 over 9, 30 over pi, multiply both sides by, by 9, right? Now multiply both sides by, by 9, right? And we'll get, what's 3 times 9? It's um, 270, thank you. 270 all over 48 pi is equal to h prime of t. Can we simplify this at all? Let's see, what's 48 divided by 2? 24. Okay, so this is equal to um, 24 pi. And what's 270 divided by 2? 135. Okay, and um, can I divide uh, 24 by, I can divide it by what do I want to divide it by? Um, three. Did I make a mistake? I'm afraid I, hold on, 16, that's okay. I can divide both sides by six. It's okay, this is fine. H prime of t. Done. All right. What's the units on this? Centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. Uh, this is all about how uh, fast is the water level rising. So we're just, it's just the height, which is why it's H, by the way. All right. Here is a different problem. We've got lots of these related rates. We're just working problems like crazy. Here we have a swing. This is a swing problem. A swing is a board on a 10 foot rope. Swings a board on a 10 foot rope. Um, suppose, uh huh, you're pushed SHDD at 6 feet per second. Suppose you're, so somebody's pushing you on a swing. All right. Uh, you start directly, starting directly below the person, uh, the, the pivot.
What's the angular speed? Uh, at one second. One, so I start pushing at, at time zero, at time zero, at one second. What's the angular speed? So let's draw a picture. In real life, the question would probably be a little bit more clear, but let's, I'm just going to draw a picture to help clarify what's going on. So we have this. We have point Q, and here's the rope. 10 feet. Whee, there's the person, okay, on the swing. Um, this is where we start pushing. Here's the person pushing at, uh, and this will be dx over dt is equal to 6 feet per second, right? And then here's theta. We'll put theta here. There's theta. That's the angular speed that we want to know. And so you start here at time zero, in here at time one second. Does that make sense? Yes? Wouldn't the 10 feet be the green line? No, this, the, rope is, the rope is 10 feet long. Yeah, the rope's 10 feet long. Oh, and uh, we'll call this, this will be point P right here if we need it. So we've got to find an equation. Find an equation. Uh, what problem is this kind of like that we've done already? This is like the lighthouse problem. So our equation is going to be something, it's going to be something like this. It's going to be what, um, if this is, let's call this, if this is dx dt, this is x right here. That's what that is. You know, that's x. And so what type of triangle do we have here? He says it's not a right triangle, but that's okay. It's, it's okay because all we care about, what we're doing is let your, okay, okay. So this guy, this guy is saying, well, you know, the, the, doesn't the swinger swing like this, right? Yes, but you're pushing straight across, okay? And you, you can imagine your hands kind of, whatever, all right, you know, sliding up and down the person's back as you move. That's why, whatever. So your person's just pushing like this. The angle what, that we're interested in doesn't care that the bottom is not a straight line. We're not making, I want to make this very clear, we're not making an approximation here. We are just looking at the important parts of the problem. So we, the one person's pushing like this, and we're following their path. So if this is a right triangle, and this is x, how far this person travels in one second, how do we find theta? What's the easiest uh, way to do it? Sine. Sine's going to help us out. So sine of theta, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to x over 10. Now we differentiate the equation. Remember, we assume that theta and x are changing with respect to time. So we get, what's the derivative of sine? It's a cosine. Cosine of theta of t times theta prime of t is equal to x prime, make that prime good Bart, of t all over 10. When you, when you do your tests, when you do your quizzes, make sure you make this stuff 
very clear because primes make a big difference. It's just a little dash, but it changes the meaning completely. All right, so uh, let's see. Do we know any of this information here? Do we know? I think we know some of this stuff. What do we know? Evaluate at known values. So let's see what we know. This is good. So let's see. X prime of t is equal to 6 feet per second, right? So we know this one. Theta prime of t, that's what we want to find out at the end of the day. We don't stand a chance of knowing that right now. What, how far is this distance here? Can you tell me that? So that's six feet. Six feet per second, we've moved six feet. So this is six feet. Aha, we have a right triangle. This is 10. Oh, why is that important, Bart? Oh, it's because six, and this is eight, right? Right? So, um, aha, sine of theta. Can you tell me what sine, what, what, uh, Oh, can you tell me what cosine of theta is at this point? Cosine of theta is equal to 8 over 10. Notice we're not using a calculator or anything to do this. We're just looking at the pictures, looking at right triangles. So 8 over 10, we can, we're done now. 8 over 10 times theta prime of t is equal to 6. So theta prime of t is equal to 60 over 8. What are the units on theta prime of t? Radians per second. Radians per second. What's up? It's 6 over 10. 6 over 10, sorry. 8 over 10, so, geez. So theta prime, yeah. So theta prime of t is equal to 8 over 6 radians per second. Thank you very much. Is that your question too? Yeah. I was just wondering how you got the 8 over 10. How did I get the 8 over 10? Well, here's a right triangle. And uh, we didn't know 8 at first. How do we know 6? How do we know 6? So um, we're traveling at 6 feet per second. And we're asking after 1 second. So after 1 second, you've traveled 6 feet. You've pushed the person 6 feet. Oh my god, I keep on screwing this up. He says, wait, 8 over 6. No, it's not. Wait. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. 6 over 8. Yeah, 6 over 8. Okay, now all you have to do is erase your paper so much that there's a hole in it. And then underneath that sheet, you write the correct answer. Okay, so, yes? It's because, she says, okay, okay. So cosine is 8 over 10. Right, we don't know this. We use the Pythag by the Pythagorean theorem. So now cosine of theta is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Right there, this cosine of theta is. And so now, we plug in, for this cosine of theta, 8 over 10. This is the unknown, times theta prime of t, is equal to x prime of t is 6 over 10. And now we're solving for theta prime of t. And so, again, I'll write it correctly this time. And maybe I'll just edit the video so it looks like I did it. No, I'm just kidding. The correctly the first time, 6 over 8 radians per second.